How's it going? It is Charles Bodenston. Today we got a ridiculously honest book by Felix Dennis. Is a British multi, 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 multi millionaire. He said in the beginning of the book that he doesn't know his exact net worth, but it's between two and four hundred million dollars. Now that's a huge gap. But when you're that wealthy, he said there's so many layers to your assets between what's hidden, what's real, what's not real. What do you actually own when you don't own? What percentage you actually own? It's funny too, because he says if he doesn't know his assets and he's at 200 to $400 million, he goes, anyone that says the top 100 wealthiest people, they have no idea. There's no actual legitimacy. Legitimacy? Legitimacy. Yeah, there's no legitimacy to it. Book is called Yep, right to, right to the jugular, how to get rich. What's really funny is, as I read this on the subway, you should have seen, and I wear a suit to work, you should have seen the looks I was getting. You should have seen all the people that were like, and it's really funny because the reason that the Kindle became really popular is because of Fifty Shades of Grey. People are embarrassed to actually be reading the book Fifty Shades of Grey, so people are like, I'm just gonna read it on a smart reader. This is one of those books, obviously it's not a Fifty Shades of Grey, but it's one of those books that people hardcore judge you with your eyes. I've, I had a lot of people come up to me and ask me about it. This is the most brutally honest book about someone who's wealthy, and he brings it up. He said a lot of people write books about being wealthy, but guess what? They're not wealthy themselves. They don't even have any assets. They're not even a millionaire, but they're telling you how to become wealthy. This has everything. This has what it's like to be wealthy. He goes, if you want to be wealthy, you're not gonna be wealthy. If you think you can be wealthy, you will not be wealthy. He goes, you need to have a burning desire, a passionate, in your bloodstream, thirst for riches, for wealth, for abundance, for crushing it, for making tough decisions, for sacrificing a massive amount. Felix Dennis is not around anymore. And the reason I paused on it is because I just remembered a video that I heard of his a while back. It was a very, very honest video. And the reason is he sacrificed his health for wealth. A lot of people have done that, is that they have the money now, but they're dead. Or they have the business, but they're dead. Famous one right now, Steve Jobs. He created an incredible, incredible company in Apple. But he's not here anymore because he's, he was so stressed out and he just pushed his health to the brink. The first thing I can say is that this isn't the greatest step-by-step. -step. However, the mindset is as Tony Robbins said, 90% is your mindset. And this is what the book does. It prepares you for wealth. It prepares you for all those friends and family members that are gonna come chirping at you and say, oh, you're wealthy, give to my charity, give to me. Or all those friends and girlfriends and wives that, that are ex-wives or ex-friends or anyone that you, uh, colleagues, especially in the connected world that we live in right now, that will come streaming into your life when you start showing that you're wealthy or famous or you have that abundance. Talk about all those sports figures that, that, that can't say no to those bad influences that they've had as a young friend, and then you'll see them get in trouble like Mike Vick and dogfighting. He said those people are gonna come and try and get back into your life, those people that you've pushed away. So he said number one is you have to be vicious with your circle of friends, your circle of colleagues, business partners, relationships. He goes, you can't trust anyone. That's hard for me to even hear because I have a very close family, I have a lot of close friends, and for, them, for him to say that, that's kind of a big deal. The entire first part is Ironically enough about reasons not to get rich. He struggled with this. I struggled with this because this was the original reason I wanted to become wealthy and he mentioned a lot of them, which is you want to become wealthy so you can have prettier girls, so you can have a nicer house, so you can have a nicer yacht. And what he mentions is that you're gonna start chasing the money and then chasing the money and chasing the money and you're not gonna enjoy it. You're then gonna be unhappy because you're gonna get money but then you're gonna see someone wealthier. You're gonna see someone better off than you. You go to a new level, there's another level and then there's another level and there's another level. How big is your yacht? You can get a bigger yacht, you can get a bigger house, you can get a prettier girlfriend. Then part two is about getting started. Getting started, this is what really hit me, is the honesty that he has in it in the fact of if you have any hesitations around it, don't even do it. In other words, don't even don't even desire wealth. That you think only the 1%, those ugly people at the top. He goes, you're not gonna become wealthy. If you have any disdain or any guys for wealth or wealthy people, he goes, you will not be wealthy. And, and if you do somehow accumulate wealth, you're not gonna be happy with it. And you'll give it all away. Third, he said about lottery and chance and luck. 
He doesn't believe in it. People that actually create and grow and sustain and start their own business is really what he's talking about, the real wealth. That is real wealth. He's a British guy and he talks about the United States on how easy it is to grow wealth in the United States. London and in Europe, it's shunned upon. So he said, if you live in those areas and you wanna be wealthy, just know that society's gonna try and bring you down. Your friends are gonna try and bring you down. The news, the media is, he said, the United States, there's more of a collaboration, a more of an uplifting environment than there is throughout the rest of the world. Part three is getting rich. So this is, raising the capital, starting your business. He talks about you cannot be a manager, can't be an employee and get wealthy. He goes, you can't do that. You're gonna be miserable. You can't be in a nine to five. You have to be an entrepreneur, which I 100% agree because sky's the limit. When you're an employee, you have a limit to your success. Then he starts going into part four, which is really the end game. The end game is selling out the assets, just sustaining the wealth. Ty Lopez said it from a mentor that he remembered, is you only need to get wealthy once. You only need to get rich once. One of the people, I think his name is Bill Cunningham, I think so, maybe, and the guy's worth over $100 million and then he lost $100 million and then went into debt $100 million. Not only did he get wealthy, he lost all of it and then he went into debt $100 million, went into depression, he got a divorce, his kids hated him. Three years later, he finally came out of this funk and then he said again, he said, it's not about getting rich. It's about getting rich and staying rich. Really the biggest thing is that a lot of people make it, but then they die off because they don't have anything to strive for. You have to have an end game that also keeps you vibrant, thriving. Tony Robbins also said that a lot of people that get wealthy and then, they, they, then the business gets so big they start talking about the old days. The old days when it was fun and exciting and it was there were so many risks that we took. Tony Robbins said, you can still take those risks. You can still go out there. You can still just have that culture of exciting and vibrance and, and exuberance. It's exactly what uh, Felix Dennis says. Always be a kid, always have that thriving, that adventure, that, that Richard Bronson in front of you, that screw it, just do it attitude and, and for me, I'm, I feel I'm at my youngest. I feel I'm at my most vibrant, my most enthusiasm, my most energy ever at any time. And I'm quote unquote getting older. In what, age years? But to be honest, for me, I'm getting younger. And that's my mindset. And that's the mindset that you, sh you should have. Here's the eight secrets. I'll just leave you with this. This is literally on the last page. So the eight secrets to getting rich. Analyze your need. Desire is inefficient. Compulsion is mandatory. In other words, if you have a desire, as I was saying before, if you have a desire, a small desire, you're not gonna be wealthy. You need an obsessed compulsion. You have to be adverse to average. You cannot settle. Number two is cut loose from negative influences. I mentioned that before. Number three is ignore great ideas. Concentrate on execution. This is amazing, it's something I need to work on. You planned enough, take action. Take the action, execute, move forward, move, do it. Screw it, just do it. Number four is focus. You have to have a keen laser-like focus on exactly what you want to do and stick to it. Number five is hire talent smarter than you. This is something that I I know I'm gonna struggle with as my company gets, uh, you know, because I, I want to be the smartest one in the room, which I think is the dumbest thing, but that's maybe just pure ego, potentially, I have no idea. Number six is ownership is the real secret. You can't rent, lease, or hold on to something partially. Number seven is sell before you need to or when you're bored. Number eight is fear nothing and no one. Get rich, remember to give it all away. Uh, Andrew Carnegie went through, he said, I spent the entire first half of my life making money, so the second half, I can give it all away. He's credited with having the most amount of libraries built in the United States. I think it's upwards of 350 libraries credited to Andrew Carnegie. There's a lot of billionaires that have pledged to give everything away. The Gates, I think Bronson, Zuckerberg, Warren Buffett is on there. I know I've mentioned a lot of Tony Robbins, but he has an amazing quote, which is, the secret to living is giving. The secret to living is giving. What are you giving? What are you giving? Value, your time, your money, your knowledge. I do recommend how to get rich on the fact of the brutal honesty of being rich. It's finally written by someone that is rich. Anyway, I come out with a video every single week. Subscribe to the videos, follow me on Instagram. Those are my two favorite social media wet, wetsuits. <laughs> social media, social media websites or whatever you want to say. Anyway, subscribe to the videos. I'll talk to you guys soon. Have an awesome day. Welcome to my bedroom. First of all, we have to talk about how to actually wake up. Number one is you need blinders. You can have zero light.